Hi there, welcome to this session on forced oscillation. What forced oscillation is, is I guess a situation where we have simple harmonic motion or we have an oscillating system and the energy is provided by a force, in this case my hand pushing up and down. So that's providing a force, a driving force. Now what we can see from this situation is that um, interesting things happen. So let's first of all start off with the fact that um, without force test oscillation we have something kind of naturally occurring. That natural occurrence is the, the natural oscillation of any object. For instance, if we use the example of a guitar string, no matter how hard you pluck it, you always come out with the same note because it has a natural frequency. Um, a child's swing, or in fact any pendulums, um, the pendulum itself, once it's set up, will always swing with the same frequency. Um, my mass spring setup, depending on the spring and depending on the mass on the end, it will always start to oscillate with the same frequency. This is known as the natural frequency. Natural frequency is all well and good, and particularly in situations where there's no dampening in a perfect physics world, that means that will keep on oscillating at that rate forever. Now what happens is situations when we force that or we provide a, a I guess that push, a motion to try and um, keep the oscillation going. So with these forced oscillations, straight, different things happen. Um, first of all, the um, depending on the frequency of the force, um, it has a big impact on the frequency of the object which is oscillating. So depending on the force which I use, as we can see, it has a big impact on the way that my spring goes up and down. If we look a little bit more closely, so yes, the frequency or the driving frequency has an impact on the final frequency, so the frequency of the object. Um, and this kind of these things are, are interrelated. But not only that, if we look at more closely, um, dampening has an effect as well. So in the real world, if we look at more closely, um, what a damp system does is that the amplitude um, decreases uh, with dampening. Okay, so we knew this before, dampening causes a decrease in the amplitude. But not only that, if we have some damping, what we find is that um, the frequency which produces the highest amplitude tends to be slightly less than the natural frequency. Okay? So there's a slight shift. If we look at the graph, we can see the peaks of the blue and the red lines are slightly lower than that of the natural frequency. So that's an important feature. So the other feature here is that the power of the driver is controlled by the dampening. Okay, So that means that the effects of the dampening kind of has a bigger impact on how much energy I'm putting into the system. 